Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Relationships Rock. Today, we're joined by a friend of mine, Yocheved, and we're going to talk about shifting mindsets. Hi, Raquel. Thank you so much for having me on. It's such an honor, and I feel like it's such an opportune and appropriate time for us to be doing this. On to Bishrat. Happy to Bishrat. I love how you're saying about it being to Bishrat. I hadn't thought of that connection because Shvat is all about branching out, and it's about just kind of not so much focusing on uh, what fruits are coming out, but kind of like the roots, right? Like it's it's kind of like very deep. So definitely, you know, there are moments where the roots can still be very deep and the potential could be very strong. Yes. And so many times I find in my own life, like we don't even know like what's, we think the life that we see in, in our little bubble is all that's reality. And like, there can be so many other things, like, like you said, like, you know, things being rooted and, and things planting and that we don't even get to see. And it's such a big part of like, what can be our future and can be our life definitely and this conversation really came because you and i were were talking and we were just speaking about the concept of sometimes you know all people singles daters married people everyone has moments of unhappiness and of you know your energy you know i'm very big into like your energy attracts and i'm very big into that if you ever spoken to me we always speak about that and we kind of got into this conversation of well how could someone who is single or who is dating be able to create this mind shift when they are stuck in this negative or unhappy headspace? Yes, I'm also very into energy and, and really think there's so, so much to it. And it's so real to me. Um, so I'm also, you know, very big into it and enjoy talking about it. Practically, I know it's a big buzzword today about shifting mindsets and energy and manifestation, but it's like practically in a Torah hashkafa way, how do we not how do we do it, but yeah, kind of like, how do we, how do we really, really, really do real mind shifts in our heads and come up with new trains of thought in our minds and come up with new ways of thinking that project positivity and allow us to be in a more positive headspace, thereby allowing bracha to come into our life and being just in a more open, healthy space. So I know for myself and I see my friends and other people as well, it happens to myself sometimes as well, where we're just in this negative space, we're in a rut, we're in a place where we're kind of closing off bracha to come into our life and we're closing off any positivity from coming in. And let's, let's, let's try to, you know, re retrain our minds to think positively to allow more bracha to come into our lives and to get ourselves out of that deep rut. Because I see for myself so many times, it's like, you see people, you're like, you're almost asking the bracha not to come in. You're almost projecting this negative thing of like, I'm not a vessel and I'm not even ready for it. I'm not even able to hold the bracha that can come to me because I'm, I'm, I'm not available for it. And we sometimes even do it subconsciously because there's a part of us that's not ready and then we can, you know, quetch and complain like, oh my gosh, I'm single. But it's like, but are you a vessel that's like really open to receive it? And something I think about often is like, Hashem, if we can say like, Hashem is naturally a giver. That's what he wants to do. It brings him the most pleasure. That's all he wants to do. But there's a lot of different like levels that his giving has to go through in order for it to come down into a very practical, physical olam haza. You know, let's say if, if let's say if we use like numbers and percentages, if Hashem wants to give someone a bracha of like a thousand, it has to go through so many different realms until it comes down to this physical world. It's like a 10%. So even the bracha that sometimes we get, that we're so ecstatic about, Hashem's like, I wish I can give you more, but your vessel isn't even big enough because of who we are and because we're, the fact that we're in a physical world. And so we can just expand ourselves and become bigger vessels to receive bigger bracha. I, I know I do it all the time. I see it all the time, day in, day out. It's just, it's it's something that's, it's incredible because Hashem, like I said, is naturally the giver. He wants to give to us. So let's let him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel like there's two, there's two aspects of this or two points of that that I would like to bring out. I remember a long time ago, I'm talking about like when I was in high school, before you were born. I'm nah, just kidding. I'm not that old, <laughs> but a while ago, um, I read The Garden of Amuna. I don't know if you've read that book. Yes. And I remember there was something there that stood out to me. He was saying how when when Hashem gives you bracha, right? He gives it without he gives it with chesed, without din, right? And when you complain, you almost create like a cloud of din on top of you where you're asking Hashem to rejudge you because you're saying, Why me? Like, why me? Why is this happening to me? You basically say to Hashem, like, whatever you did wasn't fair. Do another judgment for me. And Hashem does another judgment. Okay, fine. You ask me to rejudge you, I'll rejudge you. And what happens is this time, because you asked for it, he does it with them. You know, it's not with that extra chasm. It's almost like your situation gets worse. And then people are like, wait a second, like, why is this happening to me? So I feel like on one hand, it's this concept of really, Emuna, I know we're getting really like fluffy and spiritual here today. 
I love it. But but this concept of emuna of you know accepting what Hashem gives you and and, and being you know basimcha and the other thing is becoming your best self. You know, like the mashal that I that I always like to give. It's kind of like like a puzzle piece, right? You have two puzzle pieces that are gonna that are gonna fit together, and you know, if, if you tarnish your piece in the process, or if you don't really polish all the edges, it's just not going to fit as, as well, you know? And like, I, I wish that, that when I speak to people, I'll be able to give them like, look, this is exactly the path you're going to go on. Don't worry. You know, I have a good friend of mine who, who got married at 26. And she told me, she's like, if I had just known that I was getting married at 26, like, I would have been fine, like, fine, okay, 26, no problem, I got this, but it's the not knowing, it's kind of like being on this journey, and this is really where Muna comes in of, you're not on this journey alone, this journey is for you for a reason, and throughout that process, you have to be your best self, and I know I always say, you know, hashtag love yourself, but it's really so important, because not only for you to receive, but in order for you to really give, and you know, in dating, the you have to be able to give, you know, when people say to me, oh, you know, um, I'm burnt out. I don't know if I can continue dating or not, or how do I know if I'm ready? What I say to them is, are you in a place to give? If you're in a place to give, then you're in a place to be in a relationship. If you're not in a place to give, then what, you know, how can there be any potential? So it is developing your vessel. And at the same time, giving to yourself, you know, you're not giving someone whatever's left over. Nobody wants, you know, leftover pieces people want you know full full bracha and happiness i was gonna expand on that a little bit and say like yeah you know the idea that you were saying about like that nobody wants your leftovers type of thing so i always i think of this idea a lot so like when i sometimes i spend time with people or friends and i just like come home and i'm exhausted and i'm like what is happening and then it hits me it's like so many of us we make it so hard and difficult to care to care for us and to love us like let's say I'll talk to the girls for a second here all a guy wants to do is to care for us and love us and make us happy like that is their dream and we make ourselves so hard to love because we take our past experiences and these different circumstances and life situations that happen to us and we create ourselves around this whole like jarred like edged type of person where nobody can hit us in a wrong way or we're too sensitive in one area or like we're just so delicate and so hard to please and love because of our past and it's like can we get rid of it so we can walk into our relationship 100 percent and just be there like we're asking someone to commit their life to us you know and 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 have our children with them like can can we put ourselves there 100 percent and maybe like if our heart belongs to someone else like can we clean that up can we clean up if like you know, our heart is closed off to some extent, like, that's not fair to yourself or to, you know, your, your partner, like, can, can we open ourselves up to just, like, be in a full, loving, caring state, and, like, like I was saying before, like, so many times you hang out with these people, and it's draining, and it's exhausting, it's, like, if you present that way on days, nobody wants to go out with you, it's exhausting, it's exhausting, it's, like, how can I say this in the most, like, polite, correct way that won't possibly offend somebody, it's, like, it's it's exhausting for anybody to be able to commit to that full time. So you kind of like removing the bracha. You're kind of like sending people away. You really are. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's funny because I was just speaking to a client about this last week. We were talking about the concept of being vulnerable, and you know, people tend to think like, oh, being vulnerable is like you know, revealing my deep darkest secrets. You know, laying it all bare, and it's actually not. I think being vulnerable is just being real. You know, people are looking, they're not looking for perfect. I have a girl who told me, you know, what she felt was vulnerable was when the guy said he struggles with with, with going to Minion. And she's like, wow, like he's a real human being, you know, like when you try to be perfect, it's actually off-putting because we're attracted to imperfections, right? We're attracted to those soft edges. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's important to be real and to be present. And in terms of, of letting things go on the past, Wow, it's such a it's such a hard conversation because it really involves a lot of closure, a lot of clarity. But I would say just like three tips in terms of letting go of the past and being able to be in the present is um, number one, kind of connect to the idea that every person that comes into your life is for a reason. And we don't control who comes in, but we control how we respond to it and what we gain from it. Number two is try to get clarity of why they're not for you. 
I think when you have clarity, you're able to let go. And a lot of times, and I'm probably going to do a whole episode on just closure and clarity, but a lot of times when we're holding on to somebody is really the idea of someone. It's not necessarily that person, but it's really just like a, we kind of dump on them this whole perfection that, that we wanted, you know, or this whole potential, which I get, you know, it's hard to kind of start dating again and kind of having to start from scratch. Um, and the third thing is just be real, you know, be vulnerable. And that means being real. And the simplest example is if someone says to you on a date, you have it like, how are you? Just answer honestly. You know, you know what? Today was a hard day at work. Today was a good day at work. And it sounds silly, but it just creates like an authenticity that allows yeah. you to be present on dates and not trying to like be somebody else without having to bear your soul, so to speak. Yeah. And really it is that vulnerability is just who you are right now, just showing up as you are not it doesn't mean revealing your darkest secrets it's not, it's not appropriate at all times you know what I mean it, when the time is right it comes in but it's really just being in a place of like just mindfulness and just really who you are where you are right then just in the moment just being there with them I love that I love that it's so grounding and back to what you said for a second it was so it was such a light bulb moment for me when it was after I had it was after like a relatively long relationship that I had and I was like I was I had a really hard time afterwards and I remember someone asked me like do you miss him or do you miss the idea of you know a relationship and a marriage and a future and it was such a light bulb moment that I kept on going back to time and time again when I was struggling where it was like it could be that there were parts of him that you appreciated and liked but the pain and longing and sadness is not even about him because for you that he was not for you it was more about the overall idea of, of building a future that now just ripped away totally and I don't know if anyone listening here you know is into like the concept of you know neshamot and tikkunim and knowing each other in, in Gilgalim and past lives and Yochav, it's like 100% me oh, yeah. um, but, I, but I strongly believe that you know sometimes you meet somebody and you're like wow my neshama recognizes them right and you feel that you feel this connection and you're like wow like I get you you get me and I, I've told this to people just because you're soulmates just because you were soulmates in a past life does not mean that you have to be together in this life. Sometimes you recognize them and you're like, but we were together. Like, I know it, I feel it, but it's not for this life. And I think that's, again, it's just having these, these clarity, these concepts of just saying, this person came into my life. I was meant to, to learn something. Or maybe we had a tikkun we hadn't finished yet. You know, maybe there was something there that, that we kind of owed each other, Right. And um, you have to kind of let things go. And, I, I, and, and you'll actually notice this. When someone is not meant to be in your life, the more you try to hold on, the worse it, it goes, right? And I feel like that's almost like, like a sign of like, you're meant to let go. And the more you're trying to say, no, I want to keep them here. You know, my mom would always say to me, my parents are like super spiritual. There's three types of people that come into your life. So there's people who come and they stay forever. There's people who come and go, right? You have friends who like, they're there for a journey. And then, you know, years later you reconnect. And then there's people who come like, you know, like they touch and they go. And she said, you know, you have to really accept when people come into your life and when people leave your life. And when you try to fight it, it just creates all of this, you know, negative energy. Yes, a hundred percent. I cannot agree more. So many times you have, you, you, it's another point is like, don't kid yourself. Like it could be you had a connection with them and you felt something and it was real. And don't like try to convince yourself like, oh, it wasn't anything. It could be, it was something. And and give that to yourself and let yourself enjoy that while you're having it. But it doesn't mean that it's forever and it doesn't mean it's wrong when, it, when it's over. Definitely. And if you are stuck in a rut and you're having a hard time letting go, and I think the theme of all of this mind shift is really just loving yourself. Go back to giving to yourself. And, you know, when I do dating coaching, we really do like literally goals everyday goals of just giving to yourself, loving yourself, being in a place of joy, in a place that you're able to receive, right? Because giving is receiving, receiving is giving. And let's talk about, you know, when you have those rough days, right? Let's say you're overall in a good place and you have rough days. How do you ride through them? Oh, I love this so much. I love this so much because I think it's such a like, also a buzzword and term that goes gets flown around, like love yourself. And people are like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what love means. And I don't know who I am. So I don't know what it means to love myself. Yeah. And, and you should know. I don't think that, that. What does that even mean? Who am I that I should even love myself? What does it mean to love? I thought love is for only other people. And who am I really 
And do I even want to get to know myself really? Because I'm so scared to get to know myself really. So who should I even like, who am I even loving when I'm loving myself? And the way I look at it is in a really practical way. There's, there's so much to get to know about yourself. And I strongly encourage everybody to do that. But at a more surface level, I think of it this way. We can all split up our actions and our thoughts and the way we spend our time into either actions of I love you or I hate you towards ourselves. So for each person, it's going to be different. But say, you know, like snoozing for a half hour in the morning or getting up right away. Is it going for that workout? Is it hanging out with a friend, getting an early night, eating right? Whatever it is for each person, it's going to be different. But you want to take your actions. And ultimately, we want all our actions to be, you know, 100% I love yous. And we want to, if, if you would take, let's say, percentages again, and, and you kind of want at least at this point, like, let's do 50-50 of I hate you versus I love yous towards ourselves. And let's increase it over time and make it, you know, 60-40 and so on. Let, let's just increase the I love yous of whatever they mean to you. And, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, I'll be like, mm, I didn't feel such an I love you during that hour. And before I go to bed, I'll do something to make, to increase the I love you, um, th- you know, throughout my days, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's going to be different for different people, but just increasing that thing of like, I'm doing things to show myself that I love myself and it increases your confidence and increases your self-respect and you show up that way and you project that energy to everybody around you that way. Totally. And and I yeah. think sometimes, you know, it's hard to kind of say like the I love yous or the I hate yous. And what I recommend to people is focus on having neutral thoughts. You know, you can't always necessarily go to the other extreme of like, oh my gosh, I love myself positive. But you can, for example, look in the mirror and have a neutral thought. You don't have to hate yourself. You know, like it doesn't have to be so negative. It could also be just neutral. And you could find within the neutral, you know, something that that you really love. And I think really loving yourself really stems from knowing who you are, knowing your kohot, and knowing what makes you come alive. You know, one of my favorite quotes that I used to have in my Stern College dorm room was, find out what makes you come alive because the world needs people who are alive. And yeah. I think that that's, that's literally bottom line, what we're trying to do throughout our lives. You know, whether you're married or not married, whether you have children, you don't have children, you're old or you're young. Ultimately, that is what we came to do, to figure out who we are, what do we have to give to this world, and whatever stage of the journey you're at, you don't have a choice over it, so therefore, this is where you're supposed to be, you know? Yeah, yeah, I could not agree more, I could not agree more. Wow. Um, so you had asked me before about, like, you know, you had presented the question of when when going through a tough time, when when we're not in the best place. How, how can we, you know, you know, do a mindset shift? How can we shift our mindset? And I think a big part of it is realization first is, you know, a lot of times, let's say we're going into our days and our life with low expectations because of preconceived notions, because of past experiences, and we're dumping the negative experiences of our past into our present and our future, where we're not even leaving any space for anything positive to occur. Because we're, we're, we're dumping it. We're, we're putting the negative past into now. And if you really think about it, all we have is now because the past happened already. The future is like unfolding as we speak. Even like each second, we're like delayed a second because it's really just all happening so live. And all we have is right now, all we're experiencing is right now. And if we can stop for a moment and just stop taking the past and saying like, hey, just because that, you know, just because I got dumped a few times or just because I felt like the past few should kind of I reached out to didn't understand me or didn't reach out to me with an idea or just because, you know, I got rejected and hurt in the past or just because different, I had negative experiences. It doesn't mean that that's how it's going to be. Or just because I didn't date in five months. It doesn't mean that that's how it's going to be for the next five months. Can I leave space for there to be just empty of just like, Hashem, can you fill this with positive things happening for me can you fill my future with good things instead of me projecting and literally putting my past into my present and my future and if we can stop ourselves for a moment and allow our day to just like wake up and just be like I don't know what's going to be today but like can you fill it with positive things and then we're almost like we're we're putting the energy into our day of I'm expecting positive things to happen and that's what we project and that's what comes back Definitely. And I think it's also not just waiting for Hashem to bring good things into your life, but you doing things that you love each day, you doing things that make you happy. And, you know, if if you have a goal, if you have an idea in your mind, if you have a certain skill you want to develop or a hobby you want to take on, 
go for it. You know, like if something, if something draws you to it, I think you definitely have to pursue it. And in terms of kind of letting the past in the past, I think if the past is still haunting you, it means that there's something there that you haven't let go of and something there that you haven't learned from. And when you have those past relationships that are kind of like, you know, coming through your mind, like, oh, what about that? What about that? Obviously time heals all things, but sometimes by you ignoring it, you make it worse. <laughs> it's almost like you have to kind of acknowledge like, okay, I'm still thinking about it. Why am I thinking about it? What did I learn from it? Did I close the door? Because sometimes when we close the door is when we're able to see the ones that are open for us. But when we're still looking back at the, at the door that, you know, we haven't been able to fully close, that's when we don't really see, you know, all the opportunities that are kind of opening up. Very true. Very true. Another point on that is I think, I think another point I'm trying to say is a lot of times when negative things happen, we connect a lot of what we make a lot of like webs and stories and meaning out of different things that happen to us. And it's not necessarily true. Like just because you got rejected five times, it doesn't mean that you as a person are not lovable. You know, a lot of times like that's our like first thought. And it's like, obviously I got rejected five times. So it means I'm not lovable. And if we can try to remove that like first initial thought about ourselves, that is completely life-changing that something can happen and we can just look at it at face value. Like for whatever reason, God wanted us to go through this. It doesn't, we don't have to make a whole story and web and, and create this whole thing about ourselves and think negatively or look down upon ourselves because of it. And so, so the key to like when you're having those challenging days is really just to ride out those days, I think, and not let it become like your full, full reality because the reality is I think we're all incredible people. And, and, and like you said before, like your the quote in your room in college, like we're looking for more incredible, amazing people. And we all are that. We all have that in us to tap into and become that. And it's like, what are y'all waiting for? Like, yeah, I mean, also like, the people. question is, the question is also like, how are you defining yourself? You know, are you defining yourself by those awkward, horrible moments, those things that people said about you? Or are you defining yourself by all the, all the good, you know, and it, it's obviously, you know, we're calling this a mindset because it's all in your mind. You know, it's, it's obviously, I, I do believe by the way, the actions and doing things in a physical way do impact our mind a hundred percent, which is why I tell people, if you want to love yourself, do things that make you happy, kind of focus on that. It will, it will come. But at the same time, it's how are you defining yourself? And, and if you don't know, then Right. I mean, I'm, I'm very into journaling. Well, I think I'm, I'm bringing out all the fluffiness here, but I was actually in Madrid in a seminary and I would tell the girls just like years ago, I would tell them to write letters to Hashem and I would tell them, you know, put music and just write a letter to Hashem. Just like literally just, you know, open it all up. And a lot of times actually kind of like the manifesting word you said earlier, you can even write a thank you letter for everything that you got that you're waiting to get. And it's just, kind of like connecting and just letting go and manifesting and thinking positively. And I know this is super fluffy and it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, but if it is, then I hope that you're enjoying this episode. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, another point I wanted to touch on, tell me, um, you know, the way I view it is like a lot of times we can show up to dates and, you know, I was just talking about this with a friend tonight we were talking about like the most challenging part of dating. And I said, you know, for me, it's like, it's after you do all the research and you both agree that you're going out and you spend the hours getting ready and all the time and all the prep. And then you walk into the dining room. You know, my father meets the boy first and you walk into the dining room and within the first three seconds or less, you know that this is not going anywhere. And you know, you also know that you need to spend the next three hours with him. And this just like dread sets in of like, wow, like, again. And you just kind of like look up and you're like, Hashem, can you show me the light a little bit? Can you show me that there's going to be a point and a purpose and all of this going out and just, it just feels so endless. And then I try to remind myself like, okay, well, you know, first of all, when you're going out, it's like, you're going to know a new person, see what, you can, see what you can get to know about them and gain from them and give to them. That's for sure. Um, but sometimes it's just, it's exhausting. And a lot of times what I try to remind myself is, you know, we're all born loving people. We're born naturally. We are created to love. Look at a baby. A baby loves everybody equally. A baby's loving. We are naturally love. And then like life happens and blockages and different things come up. And that's where judgments and different things come up. 
So, you know, it's like when you're walking down the avenue and you have two people like 100 feet apart from each other and they both notice each other and they're both walking towards each other. And as they're coming closer and closer, all that's going through their mind subconsciously possibly is like just this comparing of like taller, shorter, prettier, skinnier, financially well off, who dresses better, family, looks, just so many different things happening that by the time you can even like be close enough to make, make eye contact and nod, there's so much judgment and like walls and blockages in between the two of you that there's no space to even like really get to know somebody that way because we're both kind of with like our thick walls of like already knowing thinking who we know the other person is and and I try to take that approach to dating as well like so many times you can come on a date and just be like you think you have the person all figured out and you think you know them and it's like no one that you're going out with is gonna be exactly like you and you don't want that um so can can we approach our dates and the people who are dating with just more of an open mind of like I can notice differences from myself towards the other person because we do, we notice, but it doesn't, it's just, it's a fact. It doesn't mean good or bad. It doesn't mean anything. There's no story around it. It just, it just is. It's like, okay, so they're this way. I'm that way. And let me see how I can make this the most enjoyable. And let me see what I can make out of this. Yeah. Well, see another thing with, with mind shift, I'm going to do a little bit pushback here is when you, when, when you're describing that you see somebody and you're like, oh, this, this, isn't, this is not going to be for me. What you're really saying is, this is not who I pictured for me. That's really what you're saying is when you, when you look at that person, when you meet that person, when you get that first impression, you're saying is that's not what I expected. That's not what I envisioned for myself. And I think when you rephrase it in your mind, you say, okay. So when you create that mind shift and you kind of take recognition of when I look at this person, it means, and I'm disappointed or, or I, I feel like this is not for me. What I'm really saying is this is not what I expected. And when you kind of take consciousness of that, you say, okay, this wasn't my expectation, but this is my reality. Let me go ahead and meet him. And you know, everyone has so many layers to themselves. I'm sure you've met friends. This happens to me all the time where you get a first impression of them, right? And then you get to know them. And then you're like, oh, wow, I thought you were X, Y, and Z. And then you become super close because First impressions are not always telling, you know, it's, I feel like a first impression and when people get disappointed by a first impression or I've actually just happened this tonight when someone said no to a shirach idea and just by looking at the resume and the picture and, you know, they're like, oh, he's not for me. What they were really saying is that's not what I picture my husband to look like. And therefore I don't want to go out with him. And I think if you take recognition of what your thought process is, it will also help you in how you approach dating and when you are really able to give things a chance. I love that. I'll take it. It's true. I'll take it. And yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try to change that mindset. Thank you for that. Thank you. It was not a personal attack on you, Yochavit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take anything you can get for sure. Thank you for that. But um, I think I think there is just a, a still a time when, you know, you just sometimes you just know there's an either it's an energy or it's you know because I was listening to your podcast that you did last um with Rabbi Dr. Yassi Ives oh my gosh she was amazing oh I was blown away but I'm like making everybody listen to it you should know literally he was talking and this was my face like I was just frozen (laughs) and like he was like motioning for me to talk and I was like I I can't say anything like I'm just I'm taking notes I want to memorize everything you're saying <laughs> because I thought it was like so much, there was so much depth. I honestly wish I could have just asked more and more, but we have like a time limit, but it, right. it, was, it was truly incredible. <laughs> and you kind of want to go into each point that he's saying and like milk him and, and like get more out of him. He's so, but, so but you know what, what I, what I love to do and what I, what I try to do in this podcast is really give a lot of food for thought. I felt like that episode and most episodes really allow you to kind of take it for yourself and say, okay, wow, what did he mean by this? What can I apply to this? So yeah. in a way, it's almost like, I don't want to ask too much. I want in your own head for you to ask and kind of get to your to own like, answers. Yeah. You want to flip things in your own mind and kind of just like turn the heat up a little bit, you know? Yeah. Just like, okay. Yeah. I love that. Um, um, so you were, so actually your, your podcast you did last with Robert Dr. Yessi Ives. Incredible. I loved it. And he was saying this idea of, you know, how in order for, for a match to actually come to come to be, there's all the like the the facts and, and matching up in paper. And then there's also this like siata the shmaya electricity that's needed. Sure. So a lot of, you know, you can come on and, and I think a lot of that there's there's an energy there, you know. And a lot of times you can you can come and you see the guy right away and you're like, I'm in a place where 
it's so like not it's so not like we're so not compatible that there's no standard to Shemaya here like I think that's what it is you feel that like this is so not meant to be like we have to go out for whatever reason but like th there's no electricity there's no energy of connecting or wanting to connect right but again but I'm, I'm gonna push back here because when you see somebody you haven't even spoken to them you haven't spent time with them you know, I, I, I joke around, uh, my, my background is in neuroscience, so I like science, you know, chemistry is compounds interacting, right? Yeah. You have to interact, you know, you have, you have to have them kind of hitting off of each other for you to really see if there's chemistry. But I'm, I'm not going to take away from what you're saying, because I think that there are moments when you say, like the energy just clashes, right? Like if you believe in like, you know, the different kinds of energy, water, fire, earth, um, and you kind of say, okay, wow, he's water, I'm fire, he's he's putting me out, you know, like, I can just feel that. So what I would say is, if you go with the approach of, okay, I am stuck on this date for the next three hours, right? Yeah. And there's something there that I'm going to learn, and something there that he's going to learn. And not only that, but just the importance of being mensch-like, you know, in, in dating. And But just to show that, like, no matter what life throws at you, you have to just act nice, you know, you have to be a mensch and you never know, you never know where it's going to come, whether it's his friend or the uncle or whatever, this are going to think of you, or even just the fact that you acted like a princess of Hashem, or you asked like a Ben Torah. I have a good friend of mine who um, cannot marry a Kohen, and mm -hmm. she went on a date, and in the middle of the date, they find out that he's a Kohen. I have no idea how this kind of escaped, and she felt so embarrassed. She was like, like, oh my gosh, like, and she felt so sorry. She's like, I'm sorry, like, if you want, like, I'll pay for the drink. And he was like, don't worry about it. Like, let's finish our drink. And, you know, like, maybe you'll think of someone for me or I'll think of someone for you. And they finished the drink. They finished the date. And he took her home. And I remember she was like, he made me feel like a million bucks. Like, it was just, like, he really could have at that moment gotten angry, been like, oh, you wasted my time, money, energy. But he was like, okay, we're here. Like, it's fine, um, you know? And <laughs> obviously he's such a great guy. He's married now. But it's also just this, like, just be a mensch, you know? Just, like, whatever comes at you, I feel like if you act in the best way possible, it just, you you, you kind of give that energy off. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, my, my like, one line that comes to my mind all the time with whoever I'm dealing with, just like to kind of remove judgment and just, you know, just to open my heart. Like when I'm in the spirit of the moment, I just like need to be in a good space. It's like, if I would be her or him living their life with their personality and their life circumstances, I'd be the exact same way. And I think that's just like my one line that just gets me to open up my heart and just be like, from that place, you can just, you can love and accept anybody because I would be the exact same way. And it's true. You would be, if you would have their personality and their life circumstances, that's the recipe for the, who, who the, for who they are today. And you, you would turn out the exact same way. Definitely. And even if you feel like you're not in a place that you really want to open up or you feel hurt, you can always be a mensch always. <laughs> and you can always be real. And I feel like if you're a mensch and you're real, you're going to allow whatever was come meant to come from there to come out. Amazing. I love that. So to wrap up, I actually wanted to ask you a question. If someone would come to you or you notice someone who's not really seeing themselves or who they really are, and they're just not at their best self, what would you tell someone who's struggling to see themselves or who they really are? Wow. I feel like there's a lot of parts to this question. I think the first thing I would say is if you're spending too much time looking at others, or defining yourself by others. It means that you're not spending enough time looking inside. And I think that the, the first step to really see yourself for who you are is getting to know yourself. To really doing chashbon and nefesh of knowing your kohot, your strengths, your weaknesses. And after that, I would say is make a list of all the things that you love, of all the things that bring you joy, that bring you happiness, and literally every day do three things on that list. And I know that I sound like a broken record because I say this to everyone as well. But I think that when you give, the more you give to yourself, the more you love. We know that the root of the word hava, right, is to give. And the more you give to others, the more you love them. And the more you give to yourself, the more that you love yourself. I think it's impossible to kind of look in the mirror and have a completely dim different image of who you are in a second. That's not possible. But when you give to yourself and you feel good about yourself, 
when you start looking at that reflection, it's going to look shinier. It's going to look prettier. It's going to look different because you feel good. When you feel good, that's when you're able to really see things in a much clearer way. Okay, I love that. I love that. It's so true. If we can all just tap into that and, and really take it to heart, that'd be amazing. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. And I really want to appreciate you, Javid, for coming on here. Um, I said this to Rifki when she was also on the episode um, a few weeks ago. It's so vulnerable when you are in a position, you know, when you're not on the other side, quote unquote, when you're still dating, to kind of come on and share some really deep and very raw feelings. And I think that that's what makes it honestly so relatable and so powerful because it is the things that people are going through live so to speak yeah I I for myself I was I always appreciate hearing from someone who's like who's really going through it who can really empathize and sympathize and and, and I really do because I'm still you know I'm here a minute with you all um and and to me that's always a comfort and I'm just here with you all and thank you again thank you for having me thank you for, for joining us and everyone listening thank you so much I look forward to speaking with you soon yes until next time thank you 